until we care about something besides how many points we score, we're not going to win much. Can't play like that. I mean, we scored. Our offense was good. That's five of the last seven games. We've been pretty good on offense. We are playing no defense, not one guy. There's not a bright spot. We don't run back on defense. We don't guard the ball, our pick and roll stuff. All stuff that was good, I think we were as high as like 12th or 13th in defense about 10 games ago. And we're right back to where we started, ground zero. Where all we want to be is let's try to outscore the other teams. It doesn't work in the NBA unless you're – well, actually, it never works, okay? So what I just told them, this is either you build a game that will actually work at the end of the year when you play the important games or you don't. That's it. That's what the NBA is all about. I mean, Steve Clifford didn't mince words there. Becky, what do you make of, of how forward his comments were? Well, I'm sure he's been preaching to his team all year long about playing defense. They were great offensively last year. The thing that was missing was a defensive presence, and you're starting to see it become part of your identity, and that's really what you don't want. It's hard to fix bad habits and these bad habits game after game. If the plea doesn't work behind closed doors, you put mm -hmm. it out in the open, hopefully somebody tries to take accountability for the team. Kelly Oubre used to be a very good defensive player. So you got to find somebody who's going to take the reins there and help hold everybody else accountable because it can't always just come from the coach. You can beg and plead and get the game plan right, but it, the guy's got to go out there and actually buy in and do it. Vince, what do you make of this? Mm -hmm. I agree. I mean, I played for Coach Clifford under Stan Van Gundy uh, in Orlando, and it's all about defense. And the one thing I took from it, yes, it's, he's brutally honest, and we don't hear it much, and I don't know how the young guys will respond, but what he's saying is he's trying to build for the future. And I know a lot of people look at the Hornets, oh, they might not make it to the playoffs anytime soon, but it's the mentality. It's how you come to work every day and put your hard hat on a defensive end. It, you know, if you're not a great individual defense of player, as a unit tied in and they don't seem tied in because like he said offensive uh, offensively is what's important to them right now but defensively if you say you want to make it to the playoffs you're going to have to defend some of these great players that we watch score all these points in that in that graphic uh, highlight not too long right. ago so it's, it's it has to be a premium Perk, th this isn't really just about charlotte though as much as that specific speech was bigger picture there's no defense being played kind of at that level league wide right now. Do you think that that's the case or is it the state of the offense and the talent there that's just too elite to overcome Perk? Uh, yeah, I mean, think about it. They, they've been missing Gordon Haywood. He's been out. LaMelo Ball, he's been out. Um, they don't have bridges due to his off the court uh, situation. And they just don't have the personnel, right? And especially in the Eastern Conference, it's stacked. And so when you don't have enough to get through those games where if you're not playing defense, you don't have that guy that could go for a 50 piece. You just don't. But I will say this. This is why vets matter. Like, this is why having a guy that, that, that didn't play 13, 14 plus years on the bench to be an extension of Steve Clifford, right? This is why Udonis Haslam is still in the league because he's an extension of Eric Sposher holding guys accountable. The one thing that we don't talk about enough is the policing of ourselves, of, the, of ourselves in the locker room. Like, that's, that's huge when you're trying to win. The policing in the locker room, and that goes a long way. And sometimes teams try to go the cheap route and say, you know what, I'm going to just invest in these young players and forget paying $1.5 or $2 million to a veteran to come in here and be a leader. I'm going to go the cheap route, and sometimes these are the results that you get. Right, but I guess what I'm asking is when we look around the league, not just at the Charlotte Hornets, we saw some rule changes in the offseason to allow more leeway for defensive players. Where do you fall on this bigger picture, Brian? Yeah, I mean, the league is in a spot right now where we're seeing great shooting, great talent, great innovation. But look, I've got some gray hairs here, Malika. When I was <laughs> raised covering this league, you had to win with defense. And last year in the finals, guess what? The two best teams in the, in the, in the playoffs – were the Warriors and the Celtics. Mm. And while you can get away with playing loosey-goosey in December and January, you're not going to do anything when it really matters on defense. This is what drives coaches crazy. It's what is what they fight all year to sell to their players. But we are in an era right now where we there's guys out there scoring 30 a night. We're celebrating it. That's what guys want to focus on. But, but, the, but the teams that are the best defensive teams, I promise you, over 70 years of history in this NBA, will be there at the end. And that's what Steve Clifford is trying to sell. That's what coaches all over this league are trying to sell right now. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.